All right, so Derek Rose to the Knicks is basically verbally agreed upon. The exact details of the trade are not out quite yet. Basically, it's Dennis Smith Jr., and then it is draft compensation, which is a vague thing to say. I'm going to assume it's a couple of second-round picks. Uh, I, I seriously doubt the Knicks would trade a first-round pick because they don't have any first-round picks that I would be willing to trade for one year of Derrick Rose. There are a couple of teams that would be in a position with a first-round pick that I'd consider it, but sure as hell not the Knicks because they only have their own pick and they have uh, the Mavericks pick, which is looking pretty good right now. So uh, definitely no first-round pick in this move. Um, so Derrick Rose is on the New York Knicks, or he's about to be. If the trade doesn't end up happening, then uh, this video was recorded for no reason, and I'll delete it. But for now, it seems like that's what's going to happen. So there are a lot of questions to ask right out of the gate with this, and my biggest one is why. See, I don't really understand this trade for the Knicks' sake, and then I don't like it for Derrick Rose's sake, because... I mean, I've been in that camp where I want to see Derrick Rose on a contender. And the New York Knicks, even though they've been better this year for sure, and they deserve credit for that, sure as hell ain't a contender. At least, you know, it's better than the Pistons. But um, I, I do not, I'm not a fan of this. Uh, Derrick Rose, of course, there is the Tom Thibodeau connection there. That's really the reason why is that Tom Thibodeau wanted Derrick Rose on his team. But uh, I wouldn't say it's a... Um, like it's that's the answer to why but it's not like a good answer to why like really I guess what's the point maybe other than just Tom Thibodeau being happy that Derrick Rose is there because okay first of all I mean it's fine that he replaces Alfred Payton because Alfred Payton hasn't been very good for the next past couple of years a point guard who can't shoot and then is just an okay playmaker and defender eh uh, Derek Rose, even though he's not a great three-point shooter, is better than Alfred Payton, and he's a great mid-range shooter, and he has been a much better scorer, and, I mean, fair enough. Uh, Derek Rose is definitely better than Alfred Payton, um, but Emmanuel quickly. I want to see Emmanuel quickly start sooner rather than later, uh, and this is just a move that shows to me that the Knicks are rather confident that Emmanuel quickly is not going to be starting anytime soon. Um... And I don't like that. I want to see Emmanuel quickly start for this team. Um, there's a chance he can play a good amount of the two. Like, I think he's, like, tall-ish for a point guard. I think he's, like, 6'3", which is not really tall for a point guard. But, you know, he's not small, I don't think. I could be bullshitting here, but at least it feels like it when I see him on the court that he's not short uh, for a point guard, that is. So he could probably play some two situationally at, at the very least. Um, next to Derrick Rose, and being that he's a good three-point shooter, he can be a spacer, uh, and then Derrick Rose can play make for him, I guess, a little bit, but I mean, with how tight of a leash Tom Thibodeau has had Emmanuel quickly on this year, I kind of have my doubts about that. I would like to see the Knicks embrace Emmanuel quickly, and this move is the opposite of that. Um, also, as for Derrick Rose on this team, um, I don't know that it really solves any of the problems with the Knicks, so... The biggest issues for the Knicks right now has to be spacing. Um, if you look at their starting lineup, uh, I don't know what the exact... It was previous to this. Alfred Payton, R.J. Barrett, I think Reggie Bullock, uh, Julius Randle, and then Mitchell Robinson. Uh, at least that's what it is in my head. That could vary from game to game. But Mitchell Robinson can't shoot. Uh, Julius Randle can sometimes shoot, most of the time not. Same goes for R.J. Barrett. Reggie Bullock is a good shooter, and Alfred Payton can't shoot for shit. And then replace Alfred Payton with Derrick Rose. And even though Alfred had one good three-point shooting season with the Timberwolves, which really ended up and not even being that great of a three-point shooting season, he just started the year shooting about 40% from three for like the first 30, 40 games. Um, he, this is not helping in the spacing department. Uh, it's going to help you scoring one-on-one -on -one a little bit more, but like in terms of a fluid one-on-one -on -one offense, uh, it's not there. And the Knicks have also built a bit of a defensive identity. I believe they're sixth in the NBA in defense right now, um, something like that. They're definitely in the top ten, and even though Alfred Payton is not good, he is a better defensive player than Derrick Rose, so you're going to sacrifice your defensive identity, and because of the lack of spacing, I don't know how much more significantly Derrick Rose is going to improve your offense. So 
I don't fully understand it from the on the court perspective. I would like to see Derrick Rose on a contender, and then finally, the, to put a positive spin on this, I do think this move makes sense for the Knicks from a cultural perspective. I think the Knicks have made this shift, and I have made this shift inside of my own head, where I am I'm I can't do tanking anymore. I just want to be I want to do what it takes to be good. That's the whole reason they were in the running for Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook. They were just like, look, it might not make all that much sense, but let's just stop fucking around here and being trash because at the very least we can Stop trying to bottom out every year because it never results in anything good for us. I felt that way about the Bulls because, um, like it, it tanking breeds a losing culture, and it's hard to break out of a losing culture. Even if you put the pieces around you to be a good team, it still becomes difficult to win if you if that team's core has been there for years and years of losing. I think that's an issue the Bulls have right now where they've been talking about how they don't know how to win games right now. And I think the talent on the Bulls has improved enough alongside the veteran health that has come this year to say that, yeah, the Bulls are talented enough to be a playoff team, but there are a lot of games that they end up losing because this young core doesn't really have the fight in them because of all of those years of thinking that losing is okay. That's the issue with tanking is that for your core young players in their head, they go through years of this team is intentionally trying to lose. Of course, the players are not told to try and lose. That's not what happens, but they know that the front office wants them to be bad. So inside their head, they're not going to be very good. And that sticks for a long time, and I've seen that with the Bulls. Uh, the Knicks have kind of broken away from that, and you can make the argument that trading for Derrick Rose is a way of trying to establish more veteran culture. Also, Derrick Rose was uh, being like a good vet for Killian Hayes. I think he could do that for Emmanuel quickly as well. Of course, you want a point guard who reached MVP levels in your ear of your rookie point guard. But um, it, it's... I just... I wanted to see Derrick Rose on a contender, and this move is not Derrick Rose to a contender. And then even for the Knicks, I don't know that Derrick Rose signs, re-signs with this team. The only way he does it if if he really, really enjoys playing with Tom Thibodeau, and I don't, I have my doubts about that. I think he'd rather spend the latter years of his career contending rather than playing for Tom Thibodeau. Granted. I mean, being that he signed that Pistons contract, he was very happy in Minnesota. There's a chance Derrick Rose is more interested in opportunity over championship opportunity, like going to a team where he can shoot the ball a lot. And I mean, more power to him, but I would personally rather him just average 12 points per game on a really good team rather than 19 on a really bad team. Uh, although I understand the impulse. I just want to be like, look, this seems not good, but I can score a lot and I enjoy scoring. So let me do it. Uh, and I guess the Knicks could be somewhere in the middle there because the Knicks have been better and Derrick Rose probably won't be able to be the number one shot taker on this team. Like he was on the Pistons or he was close to it. Uh, Blake Griffin, it has been weird this year. Uh, and last year, well, I guess last year, Blake Griffin didn't play that much, but either way, uh, Derrick Rose, um, Lots of uh, lots of shots available in Detroit. I think that's going to go down in New York, and then he can be at least on a better team, but not a contender. But I feel like I'd rather just have one or the other for Derrick Rose rather than down the middle because that just results in less points for Derrick Rose and still not competing for a championship. Um, so at the end of the day, my reaction to this trade is I really don't – I'm not happy it's happening. Uh, I'm – and, you know, I don't – this isn't like an anti-Knicks thing. If he was traded to uh, what team? Like the Sacramento Kings. If he was traded to the Orlando Magic. If he was traded to, I'm trying to think of like a middle of the pack playoff teams. Hell, even if he was traded to the Pacers, I wouldn't have been all that happy about it. Um, it's just, I want Derrick Rose on a contender and this is not a contender. And being that the asking price was Dennis Smith Jr., who sucks and likely a few second round picks. I don't understand why other teams couldn't get in on this deal other than like salary maybe. Like I know the Clippers and the Nets were interested on in this. First of all, the Nets shouldn't have traded for Derrick Rose, so it's a good thing that didn't happen. That would that would have been a waste of the the cap that you do have. Um so the I mean for the Clippers, 
Derek Rose makes about seven million dollars per year. Um, I feel like there's a name on the Clippers who makes around that that I'm not thinking of. So maybe they could just couldn't make the salary work. But I definitely feel like there are better teams that could have traded for Derrick Rose and just didn't. Um, for the Knicks themselves, I mean, they're gonna it's it's gonna improve the team a little bit. And if they if if he can be a good guy for Emmanuel quickly to just help develop him, then that's also great. I would just be concerned if I was a Knicks fan about how much opportunity Emmanuel quickly is going to get when really he should be starting for this team already. Like, I think there's a good chance that Emmanuel quickly is already better than Derrick Rose. And that's just going to show how high I am on Emmanuel quickly. But um, Derrick Rose is going to be getting the start. He's going to be getting a majority of the minutes. I, don't, I wouldn't know how to feel if I was a Knicks fan. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's definitely a weird one. I mean, Derrick Rose is a fun player to have, so there would be, like, I've, I've had in the past where the Bulls made a move, like, let's say, example, Dwayne Wade to the Bulls, where I was like, I don't think this is a good move, but I love Dwayne Wade, so I'm kind of going to be happy about it, even though I, sh in my head, I shouldn't. Like, I feel like if I was a Knicks fan, I would be like that, because I'd be like, look, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but I do like Derrick Rose, so I'm just going to ignore it. Um, granted, the they got him for such a low price, like... Dennis Smith Jr. is not an NBA player, um, and second-round picks are eh. Uh, sometimes you get something good out of them, but most of the time you don't, so I don't lose sleep over losing those, unless, of course, it ends up being like Draymond Green or Nikola Jokic in the draft. Uh, but even then, that's using incredible levels of hindsight, so it's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, uh, that's just kind of my thoughts on this trade. What was I going to say? Something about... Oh, yeah, uh, I mean... There's also a very good chance Derrick Rose leaves after this year, and that's not all that impactful on Emmanuel quickly because Emmanuel was already not getting as many minutes as he deserved, and as long as this is cutting out Alfred Payton and not Emmanuel quickly out of the rotation, then that's eh, fine. If it's cutting out Emmanuel quickly over Alfred Payton, then I'd be really mad, especially if I was a Knicks fan. But um, I don't think that's what it's going to be. I think it's going to be uh, Alfred is gone in terms of in that rotation, so... I don't know. It's fine. I, I wanted him on a contender, and I don't think it makes that much sense for the Knicks, but it's fine. As for the piss inside of the trade, it's fine. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Uh, I'm recording this right before uploading a video today, so or recording a video today, so I'm going to go do that now. Bye.